hey welcome to a new video i'm so happy to have you here today's video is gonna be juicy if you're new here thank you so much for stopping by and if you've been here thank you so much for being here and staying around i appreciate you you're an og Mwah. but before we get started with the juicy bits let's roll the channel intro <laughs> I did an assumptions tag years ago before I took a break off of YouTube and I thought why not do another one so I asked my Instagram followers to send assumptions they've had of me and they did and I'm here to answer all of them no filter just being real Whew, why am I so itchy so the first assumption of me is that I have a sponsor. I have gotten this assumption twice. In the last assumption tag that I did, I also got that I have a sponsor and I'm wondering what about my life makes people think I have a sponsor. If I had a sponsor, I don't think I would have done a pay bill to fundraise for my medical issues when I was giving birth to my daughter. I think my sponsor would have paid for that. So no, I don't have a sponsor. Sponsor ni mimi. <laughs> The next one is, I am from a close-knit family. Definitely, I am from a close-knit family. It's just my mom and my sisters, and now Sama. We check up on each other all the time. We're concerned about each other all the time. So yes, I am. That's a very spot-on assumption. Next, you are very critical of yourself. This is very true. I wonder how you came to the conclusion that I am critical of myself, because I truly am very critical of myself. I criticize myself so harshly. Everything that I do, I overthink. I am borderline, like, maybe I'd say a perfect perfectionist in a way but then even in my perfectionism i criticize myself so much you are a snob i tried to congratulate you on your parenting because i i err and root for you no hate man i just want to say something because there's this uh, assumption that when an influencer does not respond to you on social media they are automatically a snob in one day i get between 30 to 80 dms there's no way i have the capability of number one sitting down and responding to 80 dms in a go please remember that i am a mother of one a single mother at that so i am trying to balance and a single homeschooling mother i am balancing right now my life is split between homeschool being a mother being a content creator being an influencer being somebody who talks to her followers online and being myself it's overwhelming af every day i wake up and i'm normally, normally trying to figure out how am i going to split myself among all these things and still be happy and still be sane and still be thinking about myself at the same time so please don't assume i must know because i have not maybe seen your dm another thing by the way that i noticed the other day the other day i was scrolling through my instagram dms looking for any dm that i may not have responded to and then I discovered this section of Instagram DMs called, called a code, okay? <laughs> I discovered this section of Instagram DMs called hidden messages. I was like, what is hidden messages? And then I clicked it open. I saw so many DMs. Oh my gosh. From back, back, back. Like so many DMs. I've, I have DMs there that are from 2018. That Instagram has not put in my DMs. Because, you know, if you know how IGDM works, it's primary general requests. So after request, there's a fourth layer, which is hidden DMs. And these are DMs that I have never seen before. I even remember I post posted about it on my Instagram. I was like, wow, so many of your DMs are going to my hidden DMs. I don't know why. So it's not that I'm a snob. Don't assume that your favorite contact creator is ignoring you. They just might not have seen your message. That's literally, that's it. They are in the room. Do you want to wear a sweater? Okay, let me bring for you. But you have to wash your hands first, okay? I also have Okay, are you okay? Yeah. Are you having fun? okay sorry that was summer she's outside playing with her friends next assumption about me is seeing how you raise summer i'm assuming you come from a rich family you want help wearing it or you can wear it yourself okay come you ate pizza <gasps> what kind of pizza oh did it have a pineapple on it no pineapple oh. Tomato sauce. Oh, yummy. Didn't eat with? Tomato sauce. You didn't eat the tomato sauce? No. Why? Because I smoked it with yummy. <laughs> tomato sauce is so yummy. Are your friends still outside? Yes. Okay. No, Kiss no, mommy. Yes, at the house. Oh. Mm. 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 I love you. Close the door, please. Or do I come and close it? 
Okay. Let me tell you, creating content when you have a kid who's summer's age is long things anyway first of all let me just say a lot of you assumed that i'm a very rich person in these assumptions i'm not one to refuse rich claims me i am all about positive vibes and attracting money so yes i am rich it might not be right now but i am rich and i know that riches are coming as for how i raise summer raising summer the way i do is not as expensive as people might assume it's all about just finding ways to create great experiences for your children riddle me this though if i truly was from a rich family would i be asking people to fundraise for, for my medical bills but yes i am a very rich person amen to that from your mouth to god's ears man next one my assumption is that you do not know how to speak kiswahili sasa hey babangu ni mtanzania mamangu ni mkikuyu i'm assuming many of you have watched some of my videos where i speak kiswahili so i don't know where this assumption has come from is it because i use too much english when i'm posting my content or i do speak a lot of kiswahili in fact kiswahili was my first language i used to know english yes but i used to speak a lot of kiswahili especially that time when my dad was around that's you know that tanzanian kiswahili that's so ra la 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 I don't know what they do with their tongue, but there's a way Tanzanians talk that's just so different from the Kiswahili that's found here in Kenya. Me and Swahili, you see why so much is it you can't get Swahili because I've always tried to know that you can get Swahili. Me and I'm Swahili mob, sana. Kwanza Kiswahili na sheng. Me and I'm Swahili na sheng, sana. I just don't use it on social media that much. I don't know why. I, I obviously do not know how to speak that Kiswahili mufti that we were taught in school. You know, that's ngelia u. Ooh, ooh, whatever, e, he, whatever the heck that was. Kiswahili in school, but it was the ghetto. I don't even know what that was. Next, you are a rich kid. Yo, yeah, man, me, I'll not refuse these um these um claims that you have of me. I'm a rich kid. The next one is even about money. You have a lot of money. Amen. In Jesus' name, may it come to me. Amen. I need all this money that you guys think I have because wow, the content I'll be giving you guys. You are a volcano you seem cool but can erupt in times of immense pressure especially emotionally a hundred percent yes though that used to be me back then before having a kid i used to erupt so fast but now i'm more slow to anger i take my time to analyze situations before i get angry so these days if i do get angry at something just know that it's because it's something that has really pushed me over the edge next one you are damn rich yes amen i mean thank you jesus i love the first of all you guys think i'm so rich because it means i'm meant to be rich let's start there so whatever i'm doing that's making you guys think rich i need to continue doing it but obviously anyway i won't deny i'm not denying anything yes i'm rich amen in jesus name i have all the riches here on earth and in heaven <laughs> you are a cool kid you know i have never understood what cool kid means but i'm going to say fine I, yes i am i don't know what a cool kid is i think is it a kid who's just cool like cool vibes chill vibes i don't know maybe you can in the comment section tell me what is the real definition of a cool kid next you've never been ridden on a border border that is very true and why is actually a very traumatizing story i definitely have never been on a border border not because i'm i'm bougie bougie or ew ew <laughs> i've never been on a border because my first time on a motorbike i had an accident a really bad accident hey it was so bad i actually would not be here if the bike had fallen in a different way a car just came and hit the bike that i was on i was obviously on the bike with someone a car came and hit that bike and we fell on the side of the road and my foot was like swollen like my foot was bleeding first of all a lot it was swollen and then also uh, do i really want to talk about that no i won't talk about that part and ever since i've just had a phobia of um motorbikes so yes i have never and i won't ever go on a border border the next one is you've never lived up country i mean it's not an assumption it's a fact i have never lived up country i was born and raised in the city i'm a city girl Woo! though Upcountry life is, in my opinion, is better quality than city life right now because, first of all, the air is so fresh there. Secondly, the food is organic. Thirdly, it's just quiet and peaceful compared to this noisy city of ours. The city can be so noisy. But I would not trade city life for anything, mainly because I like the accessibility to so many things like malls, theaters, everything. Everything that we have access to in the city, I love. You don't use a matatu. I used to use matatus before having a child. I would use matatus all the time, especially like going to the office. So, eh, I remember it was so ghetto going to the office. I would take three matatus just to get to the office because it was all the way on the other side of town. But after having my child, I stopped using matatus for sure. Not because, again, I'm being bougie, but because after the injuries that I sustained, you know, matatus are very uncomfortable and very rough. Like the way matatus drive. 
they're just so rough with it. And I was just imagining myself sitting inside a matatu, being rusha rusha, the way they rusha people sometimes. And I have those vaginal injuries that I had. So I stopped taking matatus after giving birth and sustaining my fistula injuries. But I have taken a matatu. I mean, come on. So the next one is that you live life unapologetically. Hmm. Do I? I would say I used to live life unapologetically before having my baby. Who's that? You're back home. What's happening? Okay, close the door. No, don't cry. Summer came home from playing with her friends and they're all going home and she's sad. <sighs> anyway, I used to live life unapologetically before having a kid. Now I live life cautious. You are a snob. Again, I'm not a snob. I don't know what about me makes people think that I'm a snob. Because even I remember there are times where I would meet people out there, like if I'm in a supermarket and I bump into someone, some people would actually be so scared to say hi to me. Like there's a girl who literally, she kept looking at me and I looked at her and then I was like, hi. And she was like, oh my god, hi, I wanted to say hi, but I wasn't sure if I was going to disturb you. And I told her, why? Why are you saying that? And she's like, you know, I've had such bad experiences with um, influencers and content creators. I've met some in real life, and they have been so mean to me. They've been so snobbish. So it's shocking that you actually said hi to me. So I was like, okay, but you can't bundle all of us up into one, one bundle, <laughs> one bubble. So anyway, so maybe that is the perception. Is it because I'm an influencer and content creator that you think I'm a snob or what is it? But I am not a snob. I actually love talking to my, my tribe members because why would I snob you guys without you? I would not be the person I am right now. The thing that people need to realize is that content creators, influencers, celebrities, all those people who are public figures, they are nothing without their supporters. So there is no way that I'm going to snob you guys at because I think Suji and Mariah Carey or Beyonce. <laughs> this one is not an assumption, but a question. And I don't know if I want to answer this. My mom watches this. Do you? I want to whisper this. You know, I have people in the house. Do you use sex toys because you have been single for a long time? Well, no, I don't. I have been single yes for a very long time, but I am enjoying my life so much. Like this is the happiest I've been in a long time to the point where I feel like the person I'm going to date next or my future husband is going to have a very hard time because he's going to find somebody who's very comfortable in her solitude. So no, I do not, girl. That's such a... I told you guys to keep these questions PG-13. What kind of question is this, sis? <laughs> you are secretly married. Wow. I wish. Do you know, if I was secretly married, do you know I'd be on baby number two by now? I would have had my second born and probably be pregnant with my third child by now. I am not married, guys. And please, if I was getting married, there would be like a whole wedding vlog on this YouTube channel of mine. I wish I was married, though. I am ready to get married, for sure. Like, I would love to be married by the time I'm 32, 33. So, meaning I have to meet my future husband now, when I'm 31, so that we can, like, get to know each other. So... Anyway, I said this about me being married by 25 and look here, I'm 31 without a husband. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for manifesting the marriage for me. I, I claim it. Ah, yeah. This next one, you guys like asking me about this specific topic all the time. My assumption about you is that you are still in love with your baby daddy. Oh God, you guys, I am not in love with my baby daddy. I have moved on from that relationship. It didn't work out. And sometimes in life, you just have to accept that things are not going to work out and choose what's best for you. He'll forever be the father of my child, but that's it. That's all that it will ever be and nothing more. I am actually so ready to just squash these questions about my baby daddy because it's annoying. I wish people would just stop asking me about him and leave it in the archives. <laughs> you come off as a very shy person well this is actually not even an assumption it's a fact i am a very shy person i'm very confident over here talking to you guys through this phone through this uh, screen this screen that you're using to watch me but in person i am so shy like i remember when i went to the youtube black event uh, the other day i was feeling so shy and so like out of place and uncomfortable and intimidated and i realize that's how i get when i'm around people that i don't know for the first time i just i'm quiet in my own i would just sit in my own corner and talk to nobody and just be in my own zone so once i get to know you and like i'm used to you i'm not shy anymore and i literally can have a conversation for like 10 hours with a person who i've gotten to know better next one is you're a very strict parent to summer well you know if you had said this about me years ago i'd probably have said no but now as she's growing up and she's doing all these very ratchet four-year-old things <laughs> 
<laughs> I found myself becoming more strict, mainly because the majority of the things that she does these days are things that are harmful to her and her body, like jumping off something or playing something sharp or running with something sharp. I would say I have a balance between strictness and cuddliness, especially being a single mom. You know, it's very hard to find a balance between being cuddly and strict, especially to a child who's going through these ratchet phases. I never show you guys the chaotic moments. I only show you the cute stuff. Otherwise, behind the scenes, it's chaos. <laughs> I'm gonna read one more because I don't want this video to be too long and this one says that you are dating a very rich man right now girl from your mouth to God's ears I want that I hope you enjoyed this assumptions tag thank you for sending in all your assumptions there are so many I could not cover them in one video this was very fun and relaxing it actually made me feel really nice about creating content again so I'm very eager to continue with the schedule i set for myself for this week thank you so much and if you haven't subscribed already please hit subscribe now thank you guys so much for watching my content i really appreciate you so much and also for taking the time to just listen to me mumble and mumble and mumble on here this week by the way i'm experimenting with a change of schedule because my analytics say so this video will be up on wednesday which is today right now as you're watching it and then the next video instead of putting it on saturday at 10 a.m i'm gonna upload it on sunday and see which days perform well because at the end of the day the goal is to have well performing videos so thank you so much for watching see you in the next video bye